Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of this newsletter is going to be, I don't know what I want to do. Well, I've got an email here from a guy who basically hasn't figured out what he wants to do with his life yet, and his interests are constantly changing, so he's having a hell of a time figuring out what his purpose is in life, and it's obviously very frustrating to him. And I talk about this a lot because at least half of my clients that I coach are dealing with quality of life issues, figuring out their purpose, figuring out their mission, or maybe trying to make a career change. Maybe they've been working at something for a long period of time or they already have a pretty good successful business and they're, it's just not doing it for them anymore. And so they're trying to figure out what it is that's going on inside them. It's Maybe it's a career change. Maybe it means selling their business. Maybe it means going and doing something they've always wanted to do. And I love working with people and helping them figure that out. And I've been reading a really great book recently. I've been meaning to get this book for a while. And it's Mark Cuban's book called How to Win at the Sport of Business. If I can do it, you can do it. Mark Cuban, he's the owner of the Dallas Mavericks. It's a short book. It's only like 71, 72 pages. And I'm almost done with it. It's just it's cool reading it because – he talks a lot about this, figuring out – because when he was younger, he didn't know what the hell he wanted to do. He just started working different jobs and it's just interesting. He had like the same kind of path and a similar experience figuring out what his true passion and his true calling was. So but I, I definitely highly recommend that book if any, any of you who are, who are in this or struggling with this. It's a, it's a great business book to read and it's just a great – book to help you figure out if you're in in that place it's just another tool for you that I thought I'd recommend and so I got a quote that I wrote that on this particular topic before we get into this guy's email and the quote says when you don't know what you really want to do with your life and it seems like your interests are constantly changing you should take lots of chances and try many jobs that appeal to you most new jobs will seem fun and interesting for about the first three months if you get bored and no longer feel challenged or excited about your job after only a few months working it, then it's time to move on and find something else. Many careers and jobs will not be what you expect once you start working them. Your ability to find something you really love and your true purpose in life is directly proportional to your ability to deal with change, uncertainty, and being flexible and adaptable. When you find your true calling in life, you will love it so much that you would do it for free. It won't feel like work and you won't get bored of it either. Only when you truly love something will you have the desire and discipline to make the level of effort required to truly master it and become the best at it. Becoming a master at something you love is what enables you to be highly compensated for it. Why? Everyone wants to work with the best and those who can afford it will always be willing to pay for it. I mean think about it. In any professional sport, the best or the, the athletes that are perceived to be the best, they're the ones that get the biggest contracts. Same thing with coaches. Coaches that coach professional sports. If you have a winning record, you've got lots of Super Bowls or championships depending on what sport you're in, you're going to get very well compensated. If you're in broadcasting or if you're a famous actor, whoever is able to get the biggest box office draw, in other words, you look at certain actors, it just seems like they get, once they get established, it's like they have one hit movie after another. People just go to see their movies because they know that they're going to be good and that's why they make the most amount of money. It's easy to see that when you think about it. Same thing with CEOs of companies. The best CEOs usually are the ones that get compensated the most. In other words, it doesn't matter what company they work for, within a few short years of working there, that company becomes the top company in its field or its industry. That's just the way it is in life. But the only way you're going to really truly become awesome at something and you're going to master something is if you love it and you have a passion for it because it won't seem like work. I was watching a documentary the other night on this guy. His name is Ricky Jay. You should Google him. It was really fascinating. This guy is like a um, – he's like a sleight of hand type guy. He does car tricks and stuff like that. And from a small age, this is what his grandfather did. And his grandfather knew all these guys who were just absolute masters of it. And so he grew up. He got to spend time with these guys and learn magic tricks and stuff like that. And he just – he loves cars. It's just amazing watching him, what he can do with a deck of cards and all these tricks that he can do with it. Repetition is the mother of skill. He just loves it. 
He's known since he was a kid that he loves it. It was, it was partly in his DNA because he, his grandfather was really in, into doing these things. He was a master of illusion. And you look at a guy who's – I think he's in his 50s or 60s now at this point in his life and he is absolutely mind-boggling amazing. If you're just playing with – because a lot of people like to play with cards but if you're not really loving it like where you wake up and that's all you think about and you just – you got to set a – no matter where you are, you got a deck of cards with you. You're not going to work at something like that to become an absolute master of it to the point – it was was so interesting and so telling. Not only him but other guys that are just absolute masters, people that he knew before they passed away. Some of these tricks, he's like, it takes me years to develop routines and tricks that he puts in his shows. It's not like he just, oh, I'm going to do this trick because sometimes they work at a single trick for two, three, four, five years. Constantly refining it, constantly thinking, how can I make this better? How can I make this more effective of an illusion? It's just absolutely amazing. It's like anything in life, if you want to become great at it, you got to do something that you love. And if you haven't found what you love, it's like Steve Jobs said. If if you haven't found it, keep searching, keep looking. It's like just like any great relationship, it becomes better with time. And you'll know it when you find it. You feel it. You won't get bored or tired of it after – a few months. It's like this reminds me, just like reading Mark Cuban's book, reminds me of the process that I went through in my 20s. I, were, I started out, I was working retail and I had done that job since I was like 18. And My first job working for somebody else other than my parents when I was a teenager was at this place that was called Cisco's Chicken. It was, like, it was a fast food place that served chicken. I worked there I think for three months and there, there was a, a retail store, it was called Service Merchandise. It wasn't far it was actually a little closer to where I lived and they paid like a dollar an hour more. I'm thinking, you know, I have to get all dirty and greasy and, and deal with all this, you know, nasty food and stuff like that. You come home, you, you smell like chicken and stuff every night and it's nice because you take leftovers home but I wanted more money. It ends up cleaner, more professional type place to work at. So I went and got a job and then I worked that job for a couple of years when I was in college and then I got a job at Tenant Bar and I thought, I mean, for, I remember for like, it took me about four months I would think it was before I got to the point where I was like – because the first few months I was there, this is so cool. I'm a bartender. It was like that movie Cocktail that Tom Cruise did 20-something fucking years ago. I can't believe it was that long ago. But it's just like flipping bottles around and doing that. It's just like when you're in college and drinking is a big part of – and partying is what you do. And like, hey, I'm a bartender. Like, I was like, really? I gotta, where you bartender? I got to come by and visit you. You know, all your friends come by and it's really awesome. At least for me, it was awesome for a few months. And there was a time, those first couple of months I was doing, I was going, gee, I don't even know if I'm going to finish my degree in construction management. I, that actually crossed my mind. But what happened was, after about three, four months of it, same thing. I got tired of it. I got bored of it. I was like, oh, this is great. I was starting to get like bar rot and shit on my hands because they're always wet. They're always in water. And, you know, and I worked that and then I started working in the construction industry and I worked for three different companies before I finally went out on my own. The first company I was working for, I was thinking, wow, I'll do this the rest of my life. This is great. I don't need to go out and buy, fix, and sell houses. I just work for these guys. Then after about a year and a half, I decided, you know, I didn't like working for one of the partners. I went to work for a developer because I thought maybe I like to develop single family home communities or, or condos or shopping malls or something like that. And I went to work for a company that was actually doing that. So I was getting paid while I was learning and I was exper- I was checking it out. And after a couple of years working for them, I was like, well, this is great. I'm working for a medium sized company. I really you know, maybe I want I really want to work on the really big projects, you know, the hundred fifty million dollar type projects. So I went and I did that and that was great for a couple of months. And I realized it's kind of the same shit. And it wasn't exciting. And after a year, I left. I went and I started on my own. I bought two I knew I just Always in the back of my mind was I wanted to buy, fix, and sell houses and I eventually was at a point where I had some opportunity. There was a company that I could buy houses from and I went and did that. Then I eventually went to work for that company and learned all the ins and outs of that, of how to flip properties, how to sell them, how to get them financed, how to find them, how to find really good deals. I learned all that stuff and then I went on my own with two of the guys that I worked with. And after a few years of doing that, I got bored with flipping houses. I still love building. I still love taking and I still do to this day. That's one of my greatest passions is being a builder, building custom homes. That's something I really just fucking enjoy. I love the smell of fresh cut lumber. I I love driving by a construction site and just looking at the cranes and the equipment they got out there or how they're they're building the building. It's just a passion of mine. It's not something that I don't do anymore. 
it's just not my primary focus as far as my business. And the beauty of what I, I do now is that I can just strictly focus on building really kick-ass houses that I love and I enjoy and I have a passion for. And so it's like – like I was saying, I've talked about this many times. It's like when something became boring and I wasn't excited about it or I didn't feel challenged, I didn't stay in that job like the average person does. Most people, when they get those feelings, they just ignore it. They start drinking more. They start eating more. They party more. They just ignore those things and they stay in that job. And what happens over time is their productivity just starts to go like this. Then four years, five years, eight years, nine years later, they're doing just enough to not get fired. And eventually it gets to the point where their attitude sucks and eventually they do get fired. And now they're pissed off at the world because they got fired or they got laid off or the company went out of business or whatever. At the end of the day, when that passion is gone, when the internal enthusiasm is gone, it's time to move on and do something else. It's so important to do that. It's like Mark Cuban went through the same exact thing. He didn't. He had an, a, an interest in computers and technology, but he really didn't know that much about it. And he worked for several different companies. And he just kind of, as he worked for these different companies, he got exposed to different things. And he spent his time working on things that were of more interest to him. And eventually, he saw an opportunity, started his his own company and then sold that company, made a bunch of money and then he started another company, sold that company, made a a hell of a lot more money and it's just that's how life grows and so your ability to find enjoyment from your purpose and your mission in life is your ability to go, you know what, this is great and I'm making great money but it's time to move on and do something else and like one of the things that he talked about is so true is like be willing to live like a college student. I mean think about it. when you're in college, you're broke. You don't have a lot of money and so you're not spending a t- ton of money. That's why after all the success that I had, I was willing to sleep on my dad's couch because that was more appealing to me than going and working some job 40, 50 hours a week, making a really good salary and having a nice place to live and all that stuff. But it would have prevented me from building the business that I have today which yeah, I would have made money and had a decent standard of living for all those years that I was struggling in the business that I have now. But I wouldn't have the business I have now. I wouldn't have the freedom that I had now. And so I was willing in essence to go back even in my – when I was in my late 30s, I was willing to go and live like a college student until I figured this business out. Why? Because I believed in myself because I knew eventually through trial and error and learning and adapting that eventually I'd figure out a way to offer my gifts and my skills to the world in a way that people go – they could see value in it and they would – that's why I get compensated very well for what I do. It's because I put my stuff out there and people say, well, this guy knows what he's fucking talking about. Look at all people, Some people follow me for two, three years before they ever hire me to coach them. And so I'm delivering a ton of value to people for totally for free. And it it's really gives you a lot of freedom. It's an amazing way to go about it. That's why I can charge the rates that I charge. And I see people complaining on YouTube and stuff like, your rates keep going up, damn it. It's like, hey, man, I'm fucking busy. I'm in demand. What can I say? I'm good at what I do. I'm the best at what I do. There's nobody out there that I've seen that does what I do in the way that I can do it. So let's go ahead and jump into this guy's email. He says, hey, coach, I'm reading your book for the second time. As a first step, I need to improve my life. I've been having trouble figuring out what I want to do with my life. I'm 25 and I have a decent job with a bank where they want me to move up, but I'm not happy there. I'm not really passionate in anything but I have a small amount of interest in many things. I don't know what I want to do with my life and I need to figure this out. My dad says sometimes you have to do something you're not happy with in order to make ends meet. Well, that's true. You still got to pay the bills. He says, but I don't agree with this. But then it also doesn't mean that you got to be miserable and settle just like I was talking about a minute ago. I could have got a job when I got out of the construction and the real estate business all those years ago when I was struggling with my life coaching practice and earned a good living because all the experience that I had in many industries and done well at it and got made eighty, hundred thousand dollars a year. I actually when I got left real estate I had a company that wanted to pay me hundred and twenty a year to come work for them and run their their mortgage company. I was like I don't want to do it. I turned it down. And I continue, you know, I continue living off my savings. I had about a half a million dollars in the bank at that time. And so I was like, I don't want to do that. And it enabled me to, to do what I did. And, and so, But the bottom line is you still got to pay your bills. You still got to eat. You got to put a, have a roof over your head. So you got to figure out a way to do that. 
He says, my interests include fitness, farming, comedy, and hockey. How can I figure out what I want to do so I can be passionate and happy? Well, go like, live like a college student. Go back to living like that. Go. If you're not happy in your bank job, it's not going to get any fucking better. I mean, yeah, you're, you're earning money, but there's a lot of people that are working jobs. They make good money and they're absolutely fucking miserable. I mean, I talk to them all the time. I talk to a lot of people who are really wealthy, really successful, and they hate their jobs. They hate their businesses. They hate what they're doing. And I don't tell them just to quit what they're doing but to go and build something on the side, especially if they're an entrepreneur. But someone like you, you're working for a bank and you're not excited about it but your interest is in fitness. Well, why don't you go work as a personal trainer? Farming, maybe you go work in the farming industry. Comedy, go work at a comedy club. Go work at the improv. Work wait tables there or something. And hockey, well, maybe if you don't, you're, you're too old or you're, you don't have the skills to, to be a great athlete, maybe you become a coach or a trainer that works with professional athletes. Or maybe you go work in the broadcasting industry and in hockey. I mean there's, a, there's literally thousands of things that you can do. But I promise you if you keep working at a bank job that is not exciting and is not emotionally compelling to you, you're never going to become su- a successful banker like say Jamie Dimon who is the CEO of JP Morgan. He's considered one of the best bankers in the world whether you like his his bank or the banking industry or not. The bottom line is – He's one of the best at what he does and his company does very well. Why? Because he has a passion for it. He really loves what he's doing. That's why he was able to ultimately become CEO and he's able to been to stay there throughout all the, the financial crash and all that stuff that's happened over the last seven, eight years because he loves what he does. But if you don't have that, that kind of passion that he does, you're never going to become a CEO of a bank because you just simply won't be willing to do what's necessary. You'll just do enough to not get fired. So follow your interests, follow your passions and say you go and you work as a personal trainer for three or four months and you get bored of it. You go, nah, this is not what I really want to do. Great. This time to move on and try something else. Go and check out farming. Maybe you want to become a farmer. Maybe you want to sell farm equipment to farmers. I mean there's, there's umpteen things that you can do. The key is to keep changing, to keep adapting. When you get to the point where the internal enthusiasm is gone – it's time for you to get the fuck out of there and go do something else. That doesn't mean up and quit your job. The smart way to go about it is to line something up because you still got to pay your bills. And so while you're working for somebody and you know it's like now you're working for a bank, you got a job that pays the bills. Now you got plenty of time to take your time and find a job that's really interesting and really appealing to you. Maybe you have to downsize a little bit. Maybe you have to sell a house. Maybe you have to get rid of that expensive car payment that you've got. You got to figure those kinds of things out, especially if you're going to go from working a job where you're making good money, where you're going to actually have to take a pay cut to go do something that's more exciting and more appealing to you. But be willing to do that, because like the more debt you get, the more bills that you have, the more expenses you have, the less options that you're going to have to go and explore these things. So he says, how can I figure out what I want to do so I can be passionate and happy? It's try a lot of things. Just like I said in the quote, be willing to tr- – maybe it takes you 15 different jobs. I mean think about it. If you work you work one job for three, four months and you realize it's not it, it's time to look for another job. It might take you a month or two to find the next job but keep going towards what you're passionate about. I mean in this day and age, it's pretty common to see people bouncing around every three to four months or every year or two. And especially if you're a good type of employee, a passionate type of person. And if you're going to work at a job that you're really passionate about, and they say, well, how can you jump around so much? Because you know, those jobs weren't what I thought they were. I just – they weren't exciting and this really excites me. If you're really excited and it's emotionally compelling, the job that you're applying for, you'll convince that person to give you a job even if you bail out after three or four months. And I talk about this in the article that I, I wrote. If you Google Corey Wayne, how to get any job you want, just apply that. That is the best way to go about being able to get jobs like they're nothing. The key though is to go and apply for something that you're passionate about, that you're excited about. He says, I used to be an amateur skateboarder and this was one of the coolest things I've ever done but I lost interest. That's okay. I mean I, I talked about this once before. When I, was in, when I was a teenager and even through my – up until I was 23, 24, I was really passionate about saltwater 
fish tanks, not just regular were, – there was just fish, but many reef tanks where I had living coral with special lights and everything. And there was a period of time where I explored like making these wet dry filter systems that were out of Le- uh, Plexiga- Lexan. It was like plexiglass, clear stuff. And there was a special epoxy welding it used to, to get the seams to stick so they don't leak. And I thought maybe that'd be something that I'd like to do. And then I looked into it. I bought some Lexan. I was like, yeah, it's not that exciting. But the point is, is that I explored that possibility. And I realized that it just didn't jazz me. I threw that shit away and I moved on to something else. Just like you did with skateboarding. And that's that's the key. You always want to be like that until you come across something that you don't get bored of after a few months. It's like I've been studying self-help my whole life. I'm 44 years now, old now. I've been studying self-help since I was a teenager and I haven't gotten tired of that. I haven't gotten tired of building. I love the smell of fresh cut lumber. I love the sound of power tools. I love the sound of drywall screw guns, driving screws into the drywall. I fucking love that. That's, I love walking into Home Depot. That's one of my favorite stores in the whole world. I'm never going to get tired of that. That's my true, one of my true cores and my passions in life. He says, my interests are constantly changing and I need help finding something stable. Well, being stable is really just making sure you got a good job that pays the bills. Being unstable is some people are just like, oh, I don't like this job and they just up and quit. And then they have a hard time paying their bills and that stresses them out. The key is that you want to take the path of least resistance but you also want to create a lot of fucking problems for yourself by not having an income because you still got to pay your bills and you still got to eat. So the smart thing to do is to line – if you're not happy in doing what you're doing now, line up your next job before you give your two weeks notice or you quit the job that you're at. That way you're not going to stress about food or being able to pay your bills. He says, I also have confidence issues. Well, confidence comes from doing something that you know how to do and doing it really well. Confidence comes from experience. And as I say all the time, repetition is the mother of skill. If you're afraid you'll never get, never get a better job, but if you have a job right now, then say a year or two from now, you've worked like six different jobs. Well, you're going to have a lot of confidence if you've worked six different jobs over the next year and a half, two years that, hey, if I don't like a job, it's pretty easy to find something new. It's all about employing the right kind of strategy and going for something that you're passionate about. He says, sometimes I'll be extremely confident in life and talking to women. Other times, I'll be weak. How can I learn to be confident at all times? Well, a big part of it would would help is to get out of that fucking banking job that is not doing it for you. Just think about it. If you don't like your job and you're going, ah, oh, fucking boss is an asshole of mine. You see this pretty girl, you're like, hey, how are you? It's really hard to get excited when you're feeling sh- you were just feeling shitty a second ago. But if you're going, you're excited about your new job and you're walking around all the time because you're excited about it, you see this pretty girl, like, hey, what's up? How are you? The enthusiasm is going to show. It's going to come through in your voice. And she's going to see that. She's going to feel that. You're a happy person. So it's so, I mean, think about it. Most of your time is going to be spent working. And if you're working at something that you're not happy about, that is definitely going to affect your confidence and your happiness. And that's going to affect your ability to make yourself attractive to members of the opposite sex, whether you're a man or a woman. He says, does this happen to everyone? I mean, I have off days. I mean, day before yesterday, it was like, actually, no, yesterday. It was like I woke up and I was just I'm in a shitty fucking mood. I was pissed. The weather was sucked. I mean, we had like two weeks of like beautiful weather and the last four or five days, last week was like shit. The week, the week, two weeks before that was like the best weather I've seen in three years in Florida. It was like literally back-to-back sunshine, hardly any clouds in the sky. And I woke up yesterday. It's fucking clouds everywhere. You know, I was planning on going to eat someplace nice, an outdoor cafe that I like to go. And it was fucking sprinkling out. I was like, fuck. I was just in a shitty mood but you got to feel it to heal. I talk about that all the time and so I sat for an hour or two and I felt my stuff. I felt my crappy feelings. I was present with it and by the afternoon, early evening, it was just – it completely evaporated and I felt great for like a month, month and a half but I had one shitty day where I just felt like crap that day. It, it happens. You know, We're human. That's part of the human condition. The worst thing you can do is to try to avoid those things. It's okay to have a shitty day. Life is not all sunshine and roses. He says, for example, I always focus on the things that I'm lacking and not the great things that I bring to the table. 
again, get a job that you're enjoying. And if you're constantly working at jobs that you enjoy, you're going to feel happier more than you do now. And that will enable you, if you look over the course of a 30-day month, say half the month, 15 days of the month, you're pretty happy. And the other half, you're shitty and pissed off because you don't like your job. Well, think about it. You start working at a job you really like. Well, now maybe you have 25 or 27 days of the month that you're feeling really happy. That's going to definitely affect, have a positive effect on your dating life. He says, I doubt myself and I know that I shouldn't. After reading your book for the first time, I just go out and I have fun with my friends and I have girls coming up to me now, which has never happened to me before. So I say, apply what I teach, dude. It will fucking work for you. He says, once I re- read the book a few more times, I think things will get even better. Yep, and they will. Repetition's the mother of skill. He says, I still have the mindset of what could go wrong or be embarrassing if I went up and talked to her and I need to get out of that funk. It just comes with time and repetition. When you get to the point where you're able to meet women, to go out on dates, to get laid, to get in the kind of relationships that you want with women, however long or however short they may be, it's, everybody's different, that builds your confidence. But it takes time and repetition to get there. He says, it's been like three years since I've gotten laid and it's because I'm weak. I'm, I'm getting stronger and I've noticed improvements late, lately thanks to your help. Just when it comes to the women, keep doing what you're doing. But a big thing that will really help you and your ability to be successful with women is getting a job or a career that's exciting and compelling. And it doesn't mean it's going to be the last job or career that you're ever going to work at. The key is to try a bunch of different things until you find the one thing that two, three, four years after you're working at it, you're not bored of it, you're not tired of it. You'll know when you find your calling because you'll always be thinking about it day. And when you wake up in the morning, it'll be the first thing that pops in your mind. When you go to bed at night, you'll be thinking about it as you're falling asleep. And if you would like to get my help personally to help you figure out what your purpose is in life, what your mission is, or if you're trying to transition out of one career into another, Go to my website, click the products tab, which will be at the top of your screen on any page, and book a phone or Skype session with yours truly. And I will talk to you soon. 